Brian, after everything you and Aaron did to, I don't want to say repair the relationship for the last two years, but after he, you know, said everything he did a couple years ago, and he comes out a couple weeks ago and says you basically went behind his back to shop him and he didn't seem too pleased from your perspective. How did the last couple months kind of transpire? Yeah, I didn't really take his comments like that, and it's certainly not true. I mean, I think, you know, as we got out of the offseason or after the season and we, we had a good conversation, um, and then, you know, we're, we're going to have some follow-up conversations. And our inability to reach him or for him to respond in any way, I think at that point, then we just kind of had to, we had to, I had to do my job and kind of reach out and understanding that a trade could be possible uh, and see who was interested, but, but shopping was never really part of that. There's not a lot so of... So when you gave him that contract extension, you've said publicly your intention mm -hmm. was for him to not just play last season, to play beyond right. that. At what point did it shift to, okay, we need to move on? Yeah, I think so. I think obviously it was a disappointing season, right? And you come out of the season, you have a lot of conversations, not only with Aaron, but with uh, the rest of the team, coaches and everybody. And as you go through that process, you kind of get an idea of where you're going to move to you know, as a team, how you're going to go forward. And I think I was really looking forward to the conversations with Aaron to see how he fit into that. Uh, those never transpired. So it, you know, there, there came a time where we kind of had, had to make some you know, decisions. So we went through his representatives to try to kind of talk to him where we were going with our team. And at that point, um, you know, they informed us they would like to, to be traded to the Jets. Was well, it you just said you, you did try and reach out to have those conversations. Oh, yeah, many times. Why course. did those conversations not transpire? You know, I can't really, I'm not going to really, you know, put it on anybody, um, but they just never did transpire. Uh, you know, a lot of attempts and went through that. But at the same time, um, you know, again, um, we're always looking out for what's best for the Green Bay Packers. And um, as time went on, we kind of had to, to move. Are you and disappointed that Aaron hasn't been more accessible this offseason? I mean, you'd love to have those conversations, right, about where our team's going and, and how he might fit into that. Um, those run, we were unable to have those, so um, it is what it is. But um, at the same time, I do feel, you know, I mean, Aaron's been a great player for us, and, um, you know, he uh, he means a lot to the organization. There's a lot of gratitude there. Um, but those conversations would have been nice. Have Brian, you have you had any convers direct conversations with Aaron at any point, and how much that he said on Pat McAfee was news to you? Um, we talked after the season. Uh, and, and we're going to continue the conversation, and then that never happened. But, um, you know, the, I don't really get into the whole media thing and, and what he does on Pat McAfee and, and those comments and things. But, um, um, you know, um, it would have been nice to have those conversations. But even in terms of, like, I want to go play for the Jets, did you did ever come out no, of his No, that mouth? came from his rep representatives. Brian, had you guys had those conversations? Do you think maybe the outcome would be differently? And that, or, or were you guys – going this way regardless of whether I think that's a hypothetical you know it, you know like again there was a lot of a lot of stuff to talk through you know as far as where we were going as a football team and the decisions we were making with the cap situation that we're in um, but um, yeah it's kind of a hypothetical so because he's um, he basically said he thought something changed from his conversations right after the season to when he came out of the retreat is that what changed is we didn't get the chance to talk about this yeah I, I can't speculate on what he means by that because again we had we never had any conversations I think uh, um, you know, as we got closer to the combine and things like that, you know, we, we talked to the representatives and just kind of talked about where we were heading as a team. And I think they relayed that to him, maybe. I'm not, but I can't, I can't speak on that. So the made timeline the is best you remember it. When did you make the decision to move forward in a different direction? And when did you have those conversations with his representatives? Yeah, I think it was really, I think that's probably more mutual than anything else. It was our kind of letting his representatives know where we were at as a football team and that we'd like to have conversations and then them kind of letting us know that that wasn't going to work. So that's, that's really kind of how it is. Have, have you, you made the decision that? that you, the, go sorry. ahead, Ryan. Mm -hmm. Have you made the decision at this point that Jordan Love will be your starting quarterback in 2023? Yeah, I think there's a lot of unknowns, but certainly I think that's the way it's trending, and we're excited about that. I mean, Jordan's um, he's put in a lot of work. He's gotten a lot better. Um, you know, a lot of really good conversations with him over this period of time, and um, certainly we're trending that way. Brian, do you have an offer on the table from the Jets? Is that? Yeah, I'm not going to get into the details of that. We've had a lot of discussions. You know, I've known Joe for a long time, and they've been really good discussions, really you know, cordial, and, and um, we'll continue to have those conversations, and hopefully we can come to agreement sooner than later. Will you have to talk to Joe here at all about that specifically? Yeah, I already talked to him, um, you know, uh, whether we have, like, you know, sit-down formal or anything like that, but we've been talking on the phone for a couple weeks now. Is so. there any scenario that you'd be comfortable making a trade without getting a first-round pick back? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, um, it's, it's, uh, that's not a necessity, but at the same time, um, you know, the value of the player is, is he's a premier player, you know, so I think getting premier picks back for that is, or players is, uh, is important. Do you have to have picks this year, or would you be willing to wait till you know, future drafts? 
I think the sooner the better. The better, I think, certainly if we get beyond the draft and everything changes, compensation changes, and, and, and then, you know, so that would be a whole different scenario. But hopefully we can get this done soon. You said he's a premier player after the season. Rob asked you who gave you a better chance to win in 2023. Mm -hmm. You said Aaron unequivocally. Why trade him then? Well, I think obviously where our team is at, uh, where we're moving forward, and, that, and quite frankly, his desires. So I think um, you know, as we move forward, um, you know, we're excited about what Jordan can do for us and, and what, what our whole team will come together around that. But um, um, it's, it's complex. It's, you know, it's hard. It's complicated. But at the same time, um, I think once um, we got down to the road and, and knew what Aaron wanted, uh, we, we've been trying to facilitate that. So Brian, you obviously have a job to do. What happens if this carries into the summer and you're not satisfied with what they're willing to give up? How, how late are you willing to go with this? I, you know, I think uh, hopefully we'll be, we'll, you know, we'll get this done before that. But I mean, as long as it takes. Brian, has communication been pretty consistent with you guys, or is, is there mm -hmm. ever been a point where talks have stalled? No, I mean, yeah, no, it's been pre pretty, pretty consistent. Mm -hmm. So both, both you and the Jets have reasons where you can theoretically wait, but there are risks that go with it too. If he mm -hmm. gets hurt, you know, you're stuck with the contract. Mm -hmm. um, he could end up changing his mind. The Jets want him, I would think, sooner rather than later for off-season stuff. I mean, when does this, <clears throat> all that stuff, come together? Can you really afford to wait until May or June? Or yeah, I think so. I mean, it's again, it's uh, there's not much going on right now, you know, and uh, so um, again, I think it it has to work for for both parties, and, and and I think we're both committed to you know figuring that out. But uh, it's really kind of in their court right now, so we'll, we'll kind of see where it goes. Why do you want that 13th pick? I want all the picks. I want all of them. You know what I mean? As many as we can get. Uh, that's not a necessity. Uh, but um, like I said, I think fair value for the players is important. Um, there's risk to all this, as you guys know. And, um, but uh, again, I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful and confident that we'll, we'll be able to reach a conclusion at some point. Have right. there been any other teams that have contacted you about trading firm, or is it just the Jets? You know, there were some loose conversations, uh, you know, maybe earlier. But uh, this is, you know, once Aaron kind of, you know, this is what he wanted. Um, we've been trying to facilitate that and just work with the Jets as of now. Brian, you don't want to get into the McAfee stuff, but there's not a lot of players. The, the McAfee stuff. Yeah. But there's not a lot of players in this league that go on, certainly yeah. with the frequency that, that Aaron has and, and basically smear an organization over and over the way he has. How do you handle that? Does that, from from just a, a, a response standpoint, factor into the decision at all to move on? Yeah, certainly, you know, whenever a player may have, um, you know, issues, you can, prefer that they they talk to you directly you know and not you know, do it in the media um but that's not uh, necessarily the way he goes about it and that's that's okay um but um yeah it's those things aren't of our concern you know so. Brian, uh, a couple of years ago obviously you could have never envisioned a situation like this when you drafted jordan but what about his characteristics the meetings you guys had the uh, sort of even keeled demeanor that he has Led you to believe that he could handle a situation like this, where it, it seemed like it changed week by week. Yeah, well, you mentioned the even keel demeanor. Um, certainly, he's had that since the time we met him. Um, you know, Jordan's been put in, in some tough situations, just like Aaron was way back in his time. And I think it's really a credit to Jordan how he's handled that and, and how, how professional he's been through this. Him and his representatives. Um, um, we've been, in, you know, kind of constant communication with them and him. And um, you know, I think he's got a really good outlook on this. He understands there's so much out of his control. Um, but I know he's really preparing, and I think he's really excited for this opportunity, and we are as well. Brian, what you saw from him this year, how much did that crystallize, you know, kind of the ascension he's been on here the last three years with, with where he finished things? Yeah, no, I just think, you know, his approach, his, um, his everyday uh, approach to what he was doing from a study perspective, how it transitioned to the practice field, um, the few opportunities he got in games, I think it was just a, you know, it's been a steady progression since he's got here. And again, you know, he kind of came in in the COVID year and all the different challenges that were thrown at him. Um, he was a pretty young man at the time as well. So, um, you know, the work ethic, I think, has always been there. Um, and then I think, you know, with a lot of these young players, you know, that year three, uh, you do seem, seem to see a lot of things. And we, and we saw it from him. And I've mentioned it before, but it's just time for him to play. Are you going to exercise his fifth year option? We're still kind of working through that. A lot of it, obviously, right now, we, you know, we have three quarterbacks on the roster. And, um, so we'll kind of see what transpires here over the next month or month and a half. If you do out. eventually trade Aaron, are you more inclined to have a backup who's a veteran or Danny or go through the draft? Um, it'd be nice. I think it would be nice to have some someone who has some experience. We have a lot of we have a lot of respect for Danny and what he's done, and we'd be very comfortable with him in the in the two spot. Um, but I think we'll look at a lot of different options. And you know, back when when Aaron took over in 2008, you know, I think it was Brian Brom and Matt Flynn who we drafted that year, and they were our backups. So. Um, you know, I think it just, um, 
you'll kind of see how that how that pans it, works itself out. Brian, with a young quarterback, you want to put as many parts around him as possible to help him. Mm-hmm. How much, if at all, has carrying Aaron's number impacted what you ideally would like to do with the roster? Yeah, I mean, I know you guys are probably well versed on if we do trade him prior to June first, well, you know what it does to our cap situation, and, and there are some limitations there that you know um, you'd not like to have. But uh, at the same time, um, we feel good about our football team as it is right now. We've been able to do some guys we've been able to get back. And um, you know we're uh, we've had a lot of players that we've added kind of in the June into August uh, time period that have been really impactful players for us. So um, we'll continue to look for the you know the value um, players out there that really might be able to help us and see how that goes as well. Could you have made this decision in early September, or did it take the full season to be able to make the decision that Love is good enough to get his chance? Yeah, he, he's been trending in the right direction the whole time. Again, I think it's it's. Um, you always would love to go out there and see those guys perform for you know eight or nine games and see how it goes. But just like with Aaron back in the, in the day, um, we didn't have that opportunity. Um, but every opportunity that he's had, um, you know, I think he's done a really nice job with. Um, if if we would have made that decision back there, sure. You know, again, it's uh, there's always unknowns to it. Um, but uh, just like there will be this year. Um, but yeah, I think we could have. From where the roster is right now to where you get the week one, obviously there's a draft coming up. How much? Do you easy of a landing r- runway for Jordan Love in year one as possible. Say that again, Ryan, I'm sorry. How much, what, what do you need to do to facilitate a smooth year one for him? Oh, I think, I mean, obviously, you know, we have a great coaching staff. Uh, he's been in our, in our system for three years. Um, you know, he, he's very, you know, comfortable with the players around him. And um, so I think, you know, again, this is a, this is a hard league. It's, it's tough to be successful. Um, but at the same time, I know he's put in the work. And, um, you know, I think, again, there's going to be adversity. It doesn't matter who you are. There's going to be adversity. So how you respond to that, how you overcome it, uh, will be a big factor for him in, in his learning phase, kind of get those scars, if you will, um, so that he can be successful as he moves forward. Brian, the, depth, or the draft falls differently every year. How do you feel about the depth of this year's draft? And does that adjust the way that you go through these negotiations, knowing that maybe a second-round pick this year is worth different than what it would be in a different year? Yeah, I think it's, it's tough to – Tough to project that out because you know it's it's uh, there's so many you know changing things. But I like the the the, the depth of this draft. Um, I think that uh, we're poised. We have I think 10 picks right now, um, so we, I think we have a chance to really help our, our football team. Um, and you know I think there's a uh, it's an interesting kind of like you know there's just the college world's changing a little bit. So how the draft you know how these guys so there's a lot of guys I think that stayed in that might have come out in, in previous years. But I do like. Um, you know, there's certain positions I think that have really good depth and uh, that we haven't seen for a while. So I think that's good. And then they kind of line up with our needs a little bit. Brian, how important was it getting Keyshawn back? And how do you see his role after what he did last year kind of evolving now? Yeah, no, that was really important. I mean, uh, you know, Key made such a big difference for our football team last year with what he, he was able to do not only as uh, in the nickel, but then as a the return specialist and, and different things on teams. And he's one of the better gunners in the National Football League. So. We're really excited about you know not only the return stuff, but um, you know I think he's going to see a lot more time in the nickel um, this year, and I think that uh, we're all really excited about that because he was in there, he was very impactful. Right, who's going to be your kicker? We'll see. Uh, <laughs> right, uh, uh, I think uh, you know well, that's kind of to be determined. Is Mason still a possibility or no? Yeah, we would never close the door, especially on uh, any of that. We'll kind of see where that goes. Um, you know, Mason, the all-time leading scorer in this franchise's history. Uh, he did some really, you know, really good things. Had a good year this past year. So, um, again, we're limited a little bit um, uh, financially, but uh, uh, would never say never. Skill players obviously help a young quarterback with mm-hmm. that transition. I'm sure you're excited with Christian and Romeo what they did as, as rookies. What changes for a young receiver year two to make that that big year two jump? Yeah, I just think there's, you know, um, I think it's just comfort um, for all these players, but you know, uh, I think. Offenses in the National Football League are so much different than they are in, in college for the most part. Uh, obviously, you know both Romeo and Christian coming from um, you know non non Power Five schools. Um, I think they were coached extremely well and probably ahead of the game f- for the most part. Um, but at the same time, I just think um, you know just being comfortable with their surroundings and, and, and just all the, the technique stuff that the coaches are, are trying to get to them. Being able to restructure Dave and a small pro left tackle, mm-hmm. what does that do for you guys, especially considering the last couple of years he's had? But what does it do for you guys just being able to keep a player like that in the most Yeah, part? yeah. I mean, obviously, Dave. Obviously, he knew he's been through a couple of years of real tough struggles. But when he played for us last year, um, we were a different offensive line, different team. You know, he, he really was. Uh, 
uh, impactful and, and, and when, he, when he was able to go. And I'm really hopeful that he's beyond the, the injury thing. I think he really got into a nice groove of how to get through the week of practice. Uh, to get to the games, and um, again, um, left tackles don't grow on trees. He's still playing at a very, very high level, so we're excited to get him back. It's safe to say you'll uh, draft a tight end on one of the first two days, probably. Never know. <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, again, and that's one of the positions I think is a very a good class, a deep class. Um, um, but you know, I really do like Tyler Davis and Josiah DeGuar, the two guys that are, that are on our roster right now, along with a couple guys that we picked up in the middle of the season last year. So um, I like that room. Um, but uh, this is a good group of college tight ends. Right, I think when, 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 um, when you guys traded Brett back in 08, I remember Ted saying, that, you know, before I signed those trade papers, I had to realize what kind of what I'm doing, the gravity of it. What do you think? I mean, you're going to have to sign those papers eventually. What's that going to be like? Yeah, you know, I went through it last year with Devontae. You know, I mean, that's just when you, when you have great players that have done so much for your organization. It's um, that's a it's a little bit bittersweet. Um, at the same time, um, you know, we're all, this was going to, I mean, at some point, you know, Aaron was not going to be our quarterback. I mean, it's just, um, that's, that's life in the National Football League. Um, so, yeah, there'll be, a, I'm sure there'll be a pause in the, in the moment. Um, but at the same time, you know, as a football team, I think uh, we're excited for, for what the future brings and we're just going to keep moving forward. You said Brent, that. Uh, both, you and, both you and Joe Douglas have said today there's no hard timeline on getting this trade done. Is there any scenario in your mind that Aaron Rodgers starts another game in Green Bay? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, right now all options are, are on the table. It's not trending that way, you know, I think, and we're very hopeful that we can facilitate this and get this accomplished. Um, but, you know, he's come back under certain circumstances before where he maybe wasn't the happiest with everything that was going on and played very well. So, um, you know, we'll just kind of see how all this transpires. And um, I think it's trending, hopefully, in the, in the right direction for what everybody wants and, and um, you know, you know, conclude this hopefully. So. If, if it trends the other way, is it an open competition at quarterback? Or? <laughs> we're, yeah, we're, yeah, we're, we're a long ways away from that. But uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll figure those things out as they come. But right now, I think we're just focused on, you know, facilitating a trade that with the player and the, and, and the Jets and, and, uh, and what we want. I think that would be best for everybody. Um, and we'll see how that goes.